Good morning, everyone. Thank you for joining us for the Website Analytics Dashboard webinar. Today is February 10th, 2022, and really appreciate you taking the time out of your day to join us. My name is Nick Fry. I'm the Manager of Business Development with Tourism Nova Scotia. And for those of you not familiar with Tourism Nova Scotia, we are a division of Communities, Culture, Tourism, and Heritage. And we work with communities and industry to attract visitors to the province, increase tourism revenues through experience and sector development, business coaching, marketing, and visitor servicing. So thank you so much for joining us today. Now, this webinar is going to be recorded. So um, we're shooting for an hour, but if it goes over, uh, you can just come back and catch the recording if you have another meeting or somewhere where you need to be. If we talk about any specific software or links or websites, we'll make sure we share that after the fact so you don't have to scribble it down. We really want to encourage uh, discussion and dialogue throughout. So if you have any questions, please put it in the Q&A at the bottom. And if you love this webinar and it's your first time joining us, all of our previous ones are online as well. So this webinar is brought to you uh, through a partnership with Digital Nova Scotia and Tourism Nova Scotia. And it's uh, specifically brought through Digiport. So Digiport is a one-stop shop of interactive services and educational opportunities. It's excellent helps tourism businesses develop digital marketing skills and access professional support to improve their online presence, which is so important nowadays. Uh, it offers a, Digiport offers a blend of professionally led services and supports live facilitated customized training and educational programs. Um, if you've signed up to Digiport or uh, Tourism Nova Scotia is in touch, you'll see that we've got um, programs launching all the time. And it's a really great opportunity for you to really enhance your digital um, needs online. So uh, without further ado, I want to introduce uh, Kevin. And uh, Kevin is a, sorry, Kevin has a passion for translating data into meaningful insights and recommendations that drive business decisions and has been working in the industry for over 22 years. Uh, Kevin started Matters of Data, his own company. And uh, his background includes um, a BSc in mathematics and computer, computer science from McGill University and a mini master's of analytics programming from York University, um, Schillick School of Business, excuse me. Kevin is the principal consultant and owner of Matters of Data. Started in 2019, focusing on translating complex data into a story that empowers and persuades stakeholders to make data-driven change. So taking that data that's so complex and actually putting it into a, you know, a story that's tangible that people can actually understand. Uh, Kevin has worked in the industry and has been the head of data science and insights with the Verb Interactive, manager of analytics and insights with Loyalty One Air Miles Reward Program, and, has, and was the lead CRM data integrator with Cusset Inc. So really uh, excited to have Kevin here today. Uh, Kevin's proud that his business offers end-to-end -end solutions. He can really help you from the start to the finish. And he really does tell that story about data in a way that's, you know, tangible and easy for um, us to understand. So, Kevin, I uh, would like to invite you onto the screen, share your screen, and help us understand our data. Thanks so much. Thank you, Nick. Uh, thanks for the introduction. Um, I will set up sharing my screen here. Excellent. All right, so I'm just gonna dive right in um, today with the, with the content. So today we're gonna to be looking at uh, a dashboard um, from a design and interpretation standpoint, you know, so not, we're not going to talk about uh, the technical side of things. There won't be any, you know, it's not about the tool. The, the presentation is going to be tool agnostic, we'll say. Um, it's, it's, uh, it, it can, if you're using Tableau or Power BI or uh, whatever your, your favorite dashboard tool is, uh, it, it, it's, it's this, this, the principles that we're talking about today are going to apply to all of them. And so uh, we're going to be looking at a uh, Google Data Studio dashboard as an example and, and walking through that. Um, and so, you know, if you're hoping for more of a how to on Google Data Studio, um, you know, I, I, if you have any specific questions, you know, at the end, perhaps I can, uh, you know, I'd be happy to answer them. And, and I'd probably just point you to the, the best, you know, 
um, Google search that you can find around, uh, you know, starting with Google Data Studio, they would probably do a far better job than I would do at, uh, at actually using the tool. But uh, if you have specific questions, happy to answer them. Okay, so um, with that said, we're gonna we're going to start with um, with looking at this dashboard. So to give you some context, um, typically this is a, a template that I start with whenever um, whenever I have a new client. Um, basically, it's sort of the the foundation that we can build upon and customize depending on the on the client's needs. Um, but it has components in here, I think, that uh, are, are really important for laying the foundation uh, of, any, of, of interpreting any website uh, analytics. And so, uh, you know, I mentioned design and interpretation. For design, it's about planning out what goes into, um, into it, you know, and thinking about how the person who's using it or the interpreter uh, or the stakeholder and how they're going to digest the data. Um, you know, the, this, the, the dashboard itself has very little to do with the numbers themselves and the data themselves and everything to do with, you know, how is it going to be digested? Uh, and in fact, the person designing it and the person interpreting it or the stakeholder, I find it always works best if they work together when, uh, when they're trying to put together uh, a dashboard. This should be a lot of feedback and a lot of back and forth and that usually leads to success. It shouldn't be, hey, go away and come back and, and, and give me something. There, there needs to be that connectivity there. Um, you'll see, you know, I'm gonna talk about some of the efficiencies along the way, but uh, it, it just makes for a smoother process overall. And so with that in mind, um, so some of the drivers, um, you know, under the design umbrella, some of the drivers typically are, you know, thinking about user experience and accessibility um, thinking about data story com uh, storytelling components and you know what types of questions are going to be answered using the dashboard. Really, that's the fundamental main driver. Um, you know, it, it often you'll often get the case where um, you know I'll meet with a client and the client will say, "Just track everything. Just uh, just you know go. I know you and and we'll we'll, we'll figure it out later on." And really that creates a lot of inefficiencies. You know, it's, it's, a, it's a very common thing to just want to track everything, but um, there, there's a difference between nice to have data and then business objective data. And so if we can really focus on the business objectives and what you're trying to do and what the, the, the website is trying to do, that will create uh, a lot less work and, and create a lot more efficiencies in the process. Um, and then, so if you're thinking about questions and those in mind, typical is, again, this is a website summary. So this is a dashboard specific to um, how users are performing on a website or how they're behaving on a website. This can be extended out, of course, if you, uh, you know, if, especially in the marketing world, if you're driving traffic to your website through, uh, through social or paid efforts, um, a dashboard can also include some of that behavior as well. For today, we're going to talk specifically about the website itself, and we'll just talk about um, all those other components as well, just as a, as a side conversation. So with that lens of, of, of website um, behavior, um, the typical questions that people want to know about their website um, start with, okay, well, how many people are, are, are coming to my website? And, and once they're there, how are they interacting with the website? And, are they fundamentally doing the thing that we want them to do on the website? You know, to, in other words, it's called conversions. Um, are they buying something? Are they, are they, you know, are they clicking out when we want them to click out? Are they doing that thing, the objective of the website? So, with those, to, so to help answer those questions, and again, from a design standpoint, it's always best to start sort of from a top-down point of view. Um, before getting into any details, you start with specifically answering those main questions, right? That executive summary, we'll say, uh, and then giving them the ability to drill down and answer some of those spin-off questions, um, because it really helps provide the context for um, some of the drivers that, that are going to be coming up. And so, 
this first page, um, typically the way it starts is broken down into answering those three high level questions about a website. Um, you can see here how uh, I'll start with just overall site traffic. You know, these are all metrics that are related to how many people are, are coming to a website. Um, same thing with uh, engagement, similar sort of type stories like you have numbers that are related to engagement uh, and what they're doing on the site, how long are they staying on the site, those types of things. And fundamental, and then finally, we have a, a key performance indicators area where it speaks to say whatever is important to you on that website. In this case, the, the examples here might be, you know, add to carts for product purchases or, um, you know, quick view links or whatever those, those are for your site, they can go in this particular card. And so you'll notice that it's not just the numbers that, that are here. So if, if, again, if I'm interpreting the site and I look at this and I say, how many people are coming to the site? You might, you, you'll see 58,000. The next question is, is that good? You know, is that, is that bad? Is it good? What, what's the benchmark? So including benchmarks with your numbers uh, is, is, that, is a really important context builder again uh, to make sure that they have some type of notion of, uh, is this a good news story or a bad news story? Uh, and so two, I have two components in here, two benchmarking components along with those numbers. 58,000 users came to the site uh, within this particular time frame, and that is up 20%. All right, so now they had, so it's just that versus the same time frame, you know, leading up to this. It can be, it can be, it doesn't have to be the, the previous 30 days, it can be year over year, it can be whatever your typical time frame that you're comfortable looking at uh, your business, it, it can be any of those. But really just having that benchmark um, will help uh, tell that story. The other thing to keep in mind sometimes when you're putting benchmarks together uh, is, is uh, seasonality, right? So benchmarking uh, can, can be complex because you want it to be as unbiased as possible. Um, if you're up month over month this year, you know, maybe it's just because, well, February typically we perform better than January, right? So um, you might want to shift your benchmarking uh, strategy or at least just have that caveat in there so that you know uh, that seasonality plays a factor. The other, the other benchmark uh, feature in the dashboard is, is a trend line. Um, so this helps with, you know, if you're seeing uh, consistency uh, over time, or if you're seeing peaks and valleys, um, then, then the, you, it opens up the door. It, it helps you pinpoint exactly where you want to drill down uh, and, and figure out, okay, well, why is there a peak here? Why is there a valley here? Um, so that this, the, uh, this is sort of an at a glance, all right, here's a health gut check of traffic coming to the site. I know the actual number. I know if it's good news or bad news. I can move on to, all right, well, how are they performing on the site? Um, and incidentally, this, this, the data that I'm pulling here is public data from, it's a Google merchandise store. So uh, there's nothing, nothing proprietary here. It's really, and if I were interpreting this dashboard, I'd see that, well, overall traffic seems to be up according to these green arrows, um, but engagement uh, isn't, isn't what it was last month. So it seems like I've described this as poorer quality traffic uh, this month. We're getting more, more people, um, but they're not doing as well once they're on the site. It could be good news or bad news uh, as a side note. It, it doesn't necessarily mean good. It could be expected. You know, if you decided to do a paid campaign and you're just driving uh, a lot of people to your site, recognizing that it might not be the best quality traffic, but it's just a numbers game. You just want more eyeballs on the site. And, uh, you, you know, you think that might be lead to more conversions. This might be an okay story. It might not be as well. Uh, it might be that, you know, perhaps you changed your websites and, and uh, it, it's, this could be an indicator that, um, it, you know, those changes weren't, weren't for the better. So the story, the, I think the message there is that these are just the numbers. This is just the foundation. It doesn't necessarily tell you the, um, the overall picture. This, this needs to be coupled 
with the context that you already have uh, about your business in order to really tell that story. It's just a complement um, to, that, to that context. It won't make the decisions for you, but it'll help make those decisions become more informed, right? So there's that big distinction uh, to make. And then finally, uh, key performance indicators here as well. It's same concept. Are they doing what we want them to do once, once, they're, um, once they're navigating and done, done with the site? Um, and again, you see peaks and valleys and areas that you might want to drill down. Um, now, I'll just, I'll just, next thing I'll chat about really quickly is one of the advantages of Google Data Studio is the interactive uh, aspect to it. And so if your stakeholder um, you know, is inclined and would, would like to also play with a little bit of the data, they can also you know, just, just change the date range to, to one that might be more uh, meaningful to them. And, uh, and then everything automatically gets updated um, behind the scenes. And then you don't have to go and sort of re-query things. So that interactivity really helps with uh, um, just providing flexibility uh, for anybody who's using the, the, um, the tool. Just switch it back as well there. And it doesn't necessarily just have to be the date. Um, people can interact with, perhaps they're only interested in their, the, the paid efforts that they're doing um, and really wanna hone in on that and, and apply that filter, providing them with um, the ability to filter as needed and tell that story um, is, is, is a really powerful component of, of Google Data Studio. Okay, so, so the idea here now is we've started at the top. Um, we kind of have some spin-off questions. We got a, a gut check, health, health check of how the website is doing. That's great, these are the numbers. What are some of the drivers, right? So um, some natural follow-up questions are who? Who are the people that are coming to our site and behaving this way? Um, and how are they navigating the, the site once they're on the site? And you know, of those who are doing the things that we want them to do, where are they coming from? What are some of those channels that, um, that are really performing better or, or underperforming? And then we can address it uh, from there. Those are all questions that will help you um, figure out your digital strategy and how to, and, and how to navigate, uh, how to basically maximize your, your, your website productivity. And so to answer those questions, this is where you start um, drilling down into subsequent, subsequent pages. Um, for the who, the, the, the who portion of it, um, you know, there's a, an audience um, page and the dashboard can, can often help, help with that. Um, Google Analytics offers um, information around demographics and device usage and, and geography just to help answer that question. Again, you know, I often, this, this is the template, but with clients, sometimes clients will really want to have that ability to drill down. So adding that drill down component uh, up here, um, specifying perhaps an age bracket or uh, a, a geographical region that they're, that they're trying to target, um, you know, and applying that filter. And then again, seeing how they're performing can really, uh, can really help them figure out again, where to put their, their marketing dollars. Um, other value that they're gonna get from the audience page is um, perhaps uh, specifically with the device usage, they might want to see a trend line for how mobile, uh, the mobile share is progressing over time. You know, is it really here in, in, for this particular website, it's only 25%, sometimes it's 60%, um, but it is growing. And so it can help inform, again, if you're trying to perhaps redesign your website. Um, it gives you that baseline and figuring out, okay, well, this is, this is, in mobile is really important. We need to develop to make sure that uh, the mobile experience is, is on par or better than desktop. So um, it can help with that. And again, geography, it, it really, um, really can help with marketing dollars and just figuring out where your market um, really is. You'll notice as well, a couple, I just wanted to call out a couple of things. Um, they don't have to be this way, but I've, I've, I've created these cards um, for the concepts that, uh, that I'm sharing in the dashboard. And, and the, the nice thing about the cards is you can take screenshots and grab them and throw them 
into PowerPoint. Um, and it's just this nice sort of easy story that you want to tell, grab it, throw it in your presentation. Conversely, the other option with Google Data Studio, and I've done this with, um, with a few clients is I've, you know, when they're trying to create annual reports or they're trying to, um, you know, put some type of presentation together where they're going to reuse that template over and over again, you can just use Google Data Studio um, as, your, as your presentation tool. The great thing about it is it has the, 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 the generic things that you typically have with, with PowerPoint uh, in that you can pull in text, you can pull in images, and you can design it the way that you want to design it, but it has that extra layer of querying the data and manipulating the data in a way that you can visualize it uh, without having to sort of redig and, and get it uh, over and over again. You know, I found one of the biggest time consumers when, when trying to put together annual reports is going to get the data and digging up the data. So um, that this can sort of flatten that time um, and, and really you can focus more on the design and, and telling that story instead of, you know, spending hours pulling data. Um, the, other, the other thing I wanted to say, I mentioned accessibility at the, at the top. Um, you know, things to keep in mind as well, and this is, I guess, with any presentation, but it's, you know, font size and, and sort of clarity and, and, and making sure that um, you're keeping, um, I guess, um, the minimum amount of clutter, I guess, uh, on, on the page will really help again, sort of draw the eyes to where you want them to look and, uh, and, and make it as, as easily digestible as possible. So this is the audience story. Um, next, another question uh, that I mentioned earlier was, okay, well, how, how are they consuming the website? Um, and this one's a really tricky one. Google Analytics itself tries to tackle it. They have a report in there that basically says, okay, here is, the content workflow. Um, and it's this messy, terrible thing to look at that really doesn't tell you any story at all. Um, and it's, it's, it's for good reason. It's, it's a tough question to answer visually. If you have a website that has even more than five pages, um, it will, it, it's a tough thing to describe. People will navigate all kinds of different ways. Um, and, and, and so it's, it's, it's hard to sort of say that story of, oh, well, this is the flow that typical, a typical user takes. There is no one flow. Uh, and so to help address that, what I usually start with uh, from a content usage standpoint is um, starting, with, starting at the beginning. What's the first most common page um, that they see when they arrive? Um, and so that'll tell you, okay, well, this is where they're landing. And, and then splitting out perhaps what's, okay, well, looking at the most popular first page, in this case, it's the home page. what's the next page they go to? What's the most popular next page they go to? So at least you're getting sort of some of the most popular starting paths. Um, and, and so that tells you that, okay, well, most people are arriving here. And once they're on the home page, this is really what they're most interested in. And in this case, it's uh, men's apparel. Um, and you can sort of see that distribution of, of where people go from there. Beyond that, it's just this tree that gets really, really ugly to interpret. I mean, if there are specific paths that you're interested in, then that's where you customize um, the, the dashboard to include those paths. Um, but again, this is the starting template and approach to take to at least tell some of the story of that content consumption. Uh, and also included in the content usage page are um, just what's the most popular content? Sure, that's the story at the beginning, but what, what are the most popular pages on, on the website uh, overall? Um, right, yes. I just wanted to clarify as well that this is not a dashboard from Digiport. Um, this is a dashboard specifically, again, for Google. Um, Google Merchandise Store, and but there is a similar system set up for DigiCourse. Um, the last thing here uh, is exit pages. So this can help tell a bit of the story. Again, you can customize this to help answer this question as well, but it helps tell the story about dropping off. Um, perhaps you have a, 
a page where people are getting frustrated with and it's the and you just you notice that hey wow that there's a high exit rate right there's a 54 percent of the people who um, are on this page end up that's the last page that they see on the site so it can help pinpoint uh, if you have any issues on the sites um, where perhaps they're getting stuck or or um, or just having a bad experience overall so that's that's sort of the 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 templated content usage story. The, the next one is, is really a big one where, all right, really the objective of the website is to sell merchandise This in, the, in this case. So we know overall that sales might be up or down, which channels are driving those peaks or valleys? Um, and then how far can we drill down to really pinpoint uh, again, what those drivers are and, and attribution and, and all of that. Um, so this is where sort of a conversion break breakdown, this is a starting point. It really is just a, a couple of tables, but the, the concept is to say, okay, well, I'm starting to see that even though direct is making up, um, well, in this case, it's actually a good news story even for the top line, direct is making up um, the majority of the sessions and the people that are coming on the site, which basically, and to clarify what direct means, it means that they typed out the URL in the URL bar. Um, they didn't come from say Google search or they didn't come from Facebook or anywhere else. They just typed it in, hit enter and went directly to the site. They weren't referred from another site or anything. So that seems to be the biggest driver of traffic here, but it's also, they have the highest purchase rate. So they're here, it's just saying that it's in this, when this time frame, they were the, the most likely to purchase. Uh, it also shows that, hey, we're, we're spending a fair bit of money on display, um, but we're not getting any purchasers, right? So maybe you start thinking, maybe we start shifting our, our traffic. So this, this really helps um, tell again, that, that attribution story um, to, to tell, um, you know, what, where should we perhaps be spending our money? And and uh, and then finally, you know, I wanted to show that you can you can actually drill down as well. You can pick pick one of these. Uh, let's just say, you know, here for page search, we're getting some purchases. What are those keywords that people are typing in that we're capturing that end up leading to uh, purchases? In this case, it's you know, it's it's to be expected. It's a branded um, Google merchandise store keyword. It's a branded search. Uh, that's leading to uh, a lot of the purchases. Um, but again, it's just that, you know, this applies to anything. It can be for social. It can, it can if you have a, a, a lot of social efforts going on right now, is it Facebook driving it? Is it Instagram? Whatever it might be, you can really start diving into figuring out, you know, how, <clears throat> how um, yeah, where should I be spending my money at the end of the day? Um, so that's, that's an overview of, of, uh, of this sort of templated dashboard. Again, you, it's just something that, you know, I would recommend that anybody who's designing dashboards to, to do as, as much setting up that, that template, uh, to start with. And then, and then it's, it's easy to sort of build off from there and customize uh, from there. There's never going to be a silver bullet, one size fits all dashboard. But as long as these components are in there, you're, you're, you're pretty uh, likely to succeed um, in the long run. I'm gonna bring it back to um, the slides. So here, you know, again, I spoke at the beginning about design and interpretation. Again, these are the two components that are, are some of the bigger drivers um, about how a dashboard can can be uh, can be built, and here's the three keys to keep in mind if you're you're um, tasked with being the designer or or the, the if you're the the stakeholder involved. Um, so on both ends. So again, from a design standpoint, top down, think of the the executive summary that you want to answer. It really helps provide the context for the rest of the story. Benchmarking tells you if the the story is good or bad and uh, segment things out. Again, that conversions 
slide will really help with, uh, with what the drivers are and, and attribution. Uh, and, then, and then if you're um, the stakeholder, I get, try to avoid saying things like, oh, let's track everything, we need it all. Um, start with, start with a, uh, these three keys to help, uh, to help with, with the efficiencies and, and, and creating a, a great dashboard at the end, a great product at the end. The first is user journey. So think about you know, all of the touch, point, touch points that a user might have with interacting with your brand. Um, specifically digital, although there are also touch points, you can think of physical ones and there, there's a the side conversation around you know, how you can track people coming into your store and what postal codes they come from or if it's in a, as, uh, events as well. But think about the digital touch points if it were for focusing on digital and um, are they, you know, think about, it. are they being tracked? Are they being optimized? What type of data points can, uh, can we get from this in order to uh, improve that user experience? Tie everything back, second, tie everything back to the business questions. Um, again, if you're not, tracking something that ties back to a business objective. Um, it's a nice to have, and uh, it's, it's really inefficient from a, from a process standpoint. And the third key from a stakeholder standpoint is, is to try to improve your, your data literacy. And, 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 and the way to do this is um, by practicing translating charts uh, into plain English and, and business related statements. Um, you know, and I think data literacy is, is on the rise for just, you know, even globally, um, everyone's getting a slightly better and being more and more exposed to charts and graphs. And so, and they typically have that ability to just to look at that and say something that's meaningful to them. An example here, I'll, I'll, I'll just hop back over to the, um, the dashboard and you know, you might say something like, if you look at this, you could say something that, hey, on average, people are going five pages deep on our website. And that's a pretty steady thing. There aren't really aren't a lot of, this is a really, you know, this is a benchmark that we can, that we can rely on. And you can use that number going forward and say, hey, like we know that people are, are diving in and they're, they're, they're really interacting with the website um, in a way that we're happy about, whatever that might be, whatever the story might be. But it's just, you looked at a chart, you looked at a number and you told that story and you were able to visualize the, uh, the experience that a user was, was, um, was going through. That's the content that I have for today. Um, I'm happy to, to jump on to, uh, to questions. I'm going to... Um, I'm going to invite Thanks. Nick as well. Oh, sorry. Yeah. yeah. No, that's fine. Thanks, Kevin. That was a uh, really, really great information and will be uh, hopefully relevant to everyone on the call. It is recorded. So if you need to you know, go back and, and double check anything, we'd, we would encourage you to do that. While we wait for anyone to ask any questions they may have, so I would encourage everyone on the call to, to ask any questions they have. Um, Kevin, we did receive some questions in advance. So if there's any that you didn't get a chance to address in your in your presentation, are you able to, to kind of go through some of them now as we wait to see if anyone, anybody else uh, has any questions for you? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I'll run through uh, a few of the questions that were sent beforehand. It's, uh, it's great. Um, so one of the, so one of the questions that came up were, how often should I monitor things, right? We have, uh, should this be a daily thing, a weekly thing, um, monthly, quarterly, a year? Uh, again, I think everything should tie back to your business objectives. Everything should tie back to, you know, how often do you need to um, answer questions as part of your daily workflow um, to make decisions to, to pivot or keep, stay the course. That should be your guiding principle about how often um, you, you check it. Uh, again, it's, it's about minimizing the time it takes to interpret the uh, information, gather that insight and move on. And so um, it's something that you just, you know, you want to be part of your workflow in an ideal state, but you also don't want to take a lot of your time. You just want to be able to get the answer and move on. And so 
again, that thinking of that workflow, how often do you think you'll need to, an to answer that question? Um, so how do, you, how do you analyze traffic to create more content that drives more visitors to the website and ultimate? So analyzing traffic. So this is a great question. I think, uh, I think the, the answer to that question is, so how do you analyze traffic to create more content, right? So what's, what's, the, what's the driver? Uh, what, kind, what type of content should you have on your website to, uh, to in order to get people to do more of the thing that you want them to do? Um, I think the, the, the segmenting um, aspect, the conversion, uh, the fourth uh, slide or the fourth page that I had in the dashboard could, could really help with that because that's where you start drilling down and uh, sort of identifying what's resonating with the users on your website. Um, and it doesn't necessarily have to be what Google Analytics offers from a segmenting, you know, the channels that they have in there and source medium, those types of things. If there's a way for you to categorize your content, whether it's through tagging or whether it's through, you know, some people want to know long form or short form for blogs, or um, if there's a way to tag it and group them in a way that you can then analyze those groups, um, that can really help pinpoint um, um, you know, what type of content will lead to a lot of success for your, for your website. So the how-to for that, um, th there are many ways to do that. Basically, you know, one of them is there's something called UTM tracking for, for Google uh, Analytics, where you set up these little variables at the end of the URLs. So if you have a campaign, say, coming from Facebook, you could put a little parameter on the end of the URL that Google Analytics will just keep for you and um, let's just say you have you have a colored you have a pink picture and you have a yellow picture and you want to know which one is working better if you tag it in the url and then you can separate it out in google analytics after the fact or in a, a dashboard afterwards and see which one is converting uh, better then that can that can uh, um, that can help you figure out it's called a b testing as well that google has a specific tool for that as well you can use it's called google optimize um, so again, you can sort of um, show people two, two or three different uh, options to see which one works best, all kinds of ways. But again, I think it comes down to combining, segmenting things out and benchmarking, um, and then uh, that'll help drive your content. Um, as more websites are being viewed on mobile, how do we adapt our website for in-depth content? Um, and and quick scan read yeah that's that's a um, I think that's a good user experience question um, you know obviously this dashboard will help or the, the concept of, of website dashboards will help you figure out the percentage and the share of like okay this this is forty percent of my of my uh, uh, of my audience so I should really uh, I, I should really care about mobile. As for the how-to, typically uh, companies will go into uh, what's called a user experience process. So the UX world of um, basically trying something, you do some research beforehand, you, um, you know, basically ask people um, questions to help inform how, the, how you're building your product. Then you sort of iterate, iteratively go through trying something, again, getting the feedback, and that feeds your next iteration. So constantly sort of improving. So it, that UX process um, typically drives, you know, how, how you can create content that creates success for you. And that's just sort of a general answer, but, um, you know, the specific answer of quick scan read, I think, you know, uh, mobile, mobile is, a, is a really interesting one where um, you, need, you need to sort of capture attention in such a small amount of space and one of the ways I think that I've seen been done in the past was um, sort of having the, 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 the quick short line, short, you know, two or three lines message that you're trying to convey, and then give them an opportunity to, uh, to click through and, and read um, sort of the longer version of it. So um, 
this way you get a little bit more in front of in front of them without having to make them scroll uh, forever to get to the message that you're trying to create. Um, yeah, so I, this, there was a question around marketing spend and demonstrate value for marketing dollars spent. I think uh, that was that was covered today. Um, there was one question on SEO. How to determine SEO keywords and and where where to put them? So one of the, one of the dashboard pages that I've that I've provided clients in the past um, that I thought helped was again sort of using the multi-purpose aspect of Google Data Studio and creating a tool built in there that they can interact with. Um, so Google Search Console is typically where you go to find your SEO answers, but that also connects to uh, Google Data Studio. And so to bring all the relevant information forward, um, you can create a tool in Google Data Studio that where you can, again, use those dropdowns um, that I showed you. And so you can list out the keywords that led to the most clicks. You can also list out the landing pages that people landed on um, that were clicked on the most and then filter on each one. So you can, you can design a tool within Google, it, Google Data Studio that um, allows you to sort of pinpoint, hey, what are the landing pages that this keyword that I've had a lot of success with, um, you know, what, what are the ones, what are the most popular landing pages for this keyword? Or, I see a lot of people are landing on this on this particular page. What are the keywords that are driving people to that landing page? So I guess you know the answer to that is leveraging Google Search Console. And if you're comfortable with the tool using it, otherwise, sort of demystifying Google Search Console by bringing what you need forward and, and sort of at a glance be able to play with um, keywords and landing pages to uh, to help you make your decision around SEO. SEO is a like a very deep field. I, you know, will never pretend to be any any form of SEO expert, but I found some success with dashboards, um, with building out a tool for for clients that um, that they themselves can play with. I think that's it for questions that were written up beforehand. Anything, um, anything from for now? Uh <clears throat> Sorry, um, Kevin, I don't see any other questions. I would say that that was a very thorough overview with a, a kind of a really, um, I would say complex subject for people like myself uh, and probably people with just uh, less knowledge of it. So um, <clears throat> if anyone, <clears throat> excuse me, if anyone has any questions after the fact or anything pops up, we're all just an email or a phone call away so we can easily share it with Kevin. Um, and Kevin is one of our Ask an Expert. So if you want to um, have Kevin one-on-one, -on -one, you can book it through Digiport. So another reason to be signed up for that. So if there aren't any more questions, I'm gonna take over the screen again. Thank you so much, Kevin. And you'll be back in a few weeks for another uh, follow-up webinar. So uh, thank you again for the insights today and look forward to your next webinar. Thanks so much for having me. Oh, you're welcome. I'm just gonna share this. Share my screen again, give me one quick sec. <clears throat> Perfect, so I'm just going to, all right, Kevin, so I'll just get Kevin to get you to cut your video now and we'll just go back to, to mine and we'll wrap this up. So thank you so much. So our upcoming webinars uh, is gonna be with Kevin on Thursday, February 24th at 10 a.m. And uh, it's going to be data storytelling, keeping the audience engaged when presenting analytics. It is uh, going to be another you know, follow up to this as well. Uh, we do try to have our webinars on Thursdays at 10. And I really appreciate uh, Kevin coming today and looking forward to February 24th. So thank you. Uh, Thursday, March 9th, we have uh, cybersecurity basics for e-commerce. This is so important nowadays um, with so many people online. You want to make sure you have uh, secure um, e-commerce. For all information about our programs, Digiport, anything we're talking about today, we encourage you to sign up for In Touch newsletter, which comes out um, twice a month, and we'll talk about uh, upcoming webinars and, you know, as well as any relevant programming. The link right here on the screen 
shows you the website uh, to get our previous webinars. So that's tourismns.ca slash webinar dash series. And we would encourage you to email, <clears throat> send us an email to uh, let us know uh, if you have any ideas for a webinar, any feedback on these ones. Uh, email tnsbusiness at novascotia.ca. Our corporate website, tourismns.ca. Uh, our consumer website where we uh, send people through our marketing would be novascotia.com. Our in-touch newsletter, tourismns.ca slash in-touch. Uh, you can find us on Twitter at uh, Tourism NS and our corporate LinkedIn is Tourism Nova Scotia. Thank you so much for joining us today. Have a great rest of your day and thank you so much.